Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. We are now gonna start working on some wall sheathing. You'll see we've got windows starting to get framed in and we're just gonna kinda work our way around this building. First off, I made sure that these walls were as plumb as possible. I used the Stabila plate level, which gives us the best reading you know, short of using a laser, but that is really hard to do outside. Probably not worth it for what it is to set up. So now what I've done is snapped a line four foot off the wall. And I'm starting here just because I wanna make sure that my four foot sheet hits right up this wall. And I don't have to do any weird cutting up here at this soffit line um, where the garage attaches. 64 foot that way, which is divisible by four, and it's 32 foot that way. So in theory, I should be good to start here, work out and end with full sheets, no ripping, that is the goal. The other thing I've done is I've snapped this line two foot up from the bottom. And the reason that is done is because my stagger is gonna be eight foot, eight foot, two foot, two foot, eight foot, eight foot. It's gonna be the best use of my materials with the least amount of cutting. I thought about doing the whole eight foot, eight foot, two foot, six foot, eight foot, four foot, four foot, eight foot, six foot. The problem is I would have to then snap a line on each one of these girts. I don't wanna go off of the bottom because we all know foundations aren't perfect. We've already seen that when we went and laid out all the post marks on these brackets. Yes, they're close, but they're not actually the exact same. I probably could get away with it. And sometimes I think, why, why does it gotta be within a quarter inch, Kyle? Just, you know, or why does it gotta be perfect? I'm sure a quarter inch would be fine if I just visually went off the bottom of our grade board. However, I'm not gonna do that. Um, we're gonna go off these snap lines. That's what we're gonna do. Gonna start with this two footer, just cause it's a lot easier when I'm doing this by myself while Greg's ahead of me doing some work. I can start with a two footer, set an eight footer on top, and then I'll have something to throw the other eight footer up against. That's what I thought in my head would be the best. The other thing I'm doing is my two foot bottoms. I'm leaving the factory sealed edge down. I'll have my cut edge up. The two foot piece that I'll be putting at the top, I will use my double cut edge. And then the next time I go down to the bottom two foot piece, I'll once again use the other side of my eight foot sheet that has a factory uh, edge that will go down. So I'll always be able to maintain a factory sealed edge down by grade. We'll be doing some detailing later to help with uh, moisture management, but that'll be coming later. So let's go ahead and get into this. So we're gonna go ahead and set some shingle nails. It's very important that your first sheets are good because that's how the whole wall is gonna be ran, off of those couple sheets. And you'll notice I'm using the Metabo. This is the 21 degree. It's got the full round head. Uh, I just think it's a, it's a good nail for sheathing, better than like a clipped head, just to tack the sheets up. And then we'll come back through with a two and three eighths by 0.113, basically an eight penny nail, fully ring shanked, exterior galvanized, and we'll hit all this off make it 100% fastened, but this is just to keep going. I don't like to have the background noise and the needless running of a compressor when I don't exactly need it. I think a lot of you might appreciate that because now you don't have that noise in the background. I gotta get a lift over here so I can run up this first run. Let's bring it over here. Oops. Oh. That good? Yeah. Nice thing is by setting this nail here, that gives me a positive stop with my sheet, but also it becomes the nail that spaces the sheet that I'm setting right above it. Okay. 
Now I know people are gonna ask, why are we running our sheathing up and down? Well, the way that all these fibers are aligned, the sheet is strongest when it is going perpendicular to your framing. We've got horizontal girts, not vertical studs. So that is why we are running our sheathing up and down, perpendicular to our framing. Now I can only assume that a lot of you out there might be saying, why are you sheathing this one? And what's different? Well, this is gonna get an LP smart side exterior. It's a home. We wanted to do something other than just a metal wall. So this is gonna get smart side. We need the sheer strength in the building. If we are doing a metal skin, the metal gives you the appropriate shear. That's why we are sheathing it. Honestly, this is gonna be great because the spray foam will be applied directly to the backside. This will be a extremely strong wall. The timbers go all the way to the truss. The truss is locked in with those th the two ears on each side. We've got these permacom brackets and then that sheathing tying everything together, man. It's gonna be a really strong wall. So I love doing this. I just, not every job calls for sheathing the entire wall. That would be very costly if you were just gonna go ahead and put metal over top of it anyway. This does work a lot better. say the best part about weather logic uh, is the fact that it's installed just like any other OSB product you're gonna nail it to the wall you're gonna space it properly but I don't have to house wrap this I just have to take this tape it's a weather logic seal tape I am going to tape the joints now this joint right here actually is where a window is so there's nothing here in this instance I'm gonna be waiting on my windows for quite some time could be a couple months, most likely will be a couple months, could be a few months. By doing this, I can have a airtight, water resistant barrier to my building so work can continue on the inside. I can have all the structure I need. And when the windows come in, I'm gonna cut my holes out and I'm gonna install those and keep going without having to mess with house wrap, without the house wrap blowing around. I mean, we're out here in the middle of the Midwest. It does get breezy sometimes over an extended period of time the house wrap blows off because it's just that's the way it is it's not a super durable product it's not going to last water will make its way behind there trust me i could do the best i can and unless you were to tape every every staple um, you're going to get water over time behind that house wrap and it's going to be sitting there causing some damage so uh, this is a great 
It's a great way to do it. Yes, there's an upfront cost to it compared to regular OSB, but of course you're gonna pay more. It's a way superior product and it's gonna give you way superior results. I think anybody should be able to apply tape. It's pretty darn easy. You roll it out over the seams and you squeegee it. When it comes to a penetration, you tape the penetration. Sometimes with a house wrap, it gets a little bit tricky getting it to lay nice, getting it to flash properly, making sure things are tucked over and whatever. You just don't have to worry about that with Weather Logic. You just have to seal tape any penetration. So I think it's pretty easy. So we're gonna go ahead and tackle this front end wall. It's the, the big wall that faces the Cory Lake here. What we're gonna do is start in the middle. We're gonna snap a, a nice plumb line from the peak down to the middle here. And we're gonna start right in the middle and we're gonna work our way to the corners. That way, any discrepancy that we might develop will be very minute on the corners versus double that if we were to start on a corner and then work all the way to the other corner. Hopefully that makes sense. It probably does not matter. I also think by running a nice tall straight line first, we'll keep everything good and, uh, and running nice and plumb. So let's go ahead and get into it. Come down, help me hold the top. We'll get this thing started. Okay, how about I do that? I'm gonna find my line. Oh, buddy. Oh no, we're using a Festool track with a Makita track saw. We're so blasphemous. You know, one thing that you can notice from the camera here is that these sheets I don't actually overlap onto the concrete, and that is because concrete always holds moisture. The less contact with concrete, the better. I just want to point that out. We're going to keep putting up some. Nice, we just got this, uh, this end wall all sheathed. It still needs to be finished nailed so we don't have all the fields nailed or even all of the perimeter nails, but all these sheets aren't going anywhere. And then obviously we need to do all of our weather logic taping. Hey, did you know that we don't have to stagger our joints for the same strength? I heard that. No. So the LG weather logic is now a struck one panel? Yes, yes it is. But really what it means is we made more work for ourselves, but it's going to look a lot prettier when it's taped off. I agree. I like the stagger better. I like the stagger. And I'm also really freaking thirsty. Hey, what do you guys think of that, man? That, uh, that was a heck of a day. Honestly, we had, I had meetings almost all morning. We started around 1030 on this end wall. And if you're looking back there and there's some weird, like it doesn't look flat. That's because there are a bunch of big window openings in there and we can't necessarily fasten the sheets in those big open areas. Also, we don't have any of the 
field, like through the middle of the panel, very rarely, once in a while we tacked it, but all of this needs to get fully nailed off. We gotta do a six inch perimeter nailing and a 12 inch nailing through the middle. So that's the nailing pattern for the uh, LP Weather Logic. And then down on this wall over here, we got to the point where we need to cut out the concrete foundation wall where we, we went from a single door to a door with two side lights on it. So I gotta cut that out so when the floor gets poured through, we got a nice threshold because this is gonna be a finished concrete floor. Uh, but just overall, man, I am super happy with today's output. Yesterday and the day before we had uh, folks from LP out here. So a crew, a team came out and shot some content around the weather logic. Um, we partnered up on this build so that they could get some of that content. I helped them with that. We've got to do a little bit of a change. So originally you can see here where this doorway is. This concrete is in my way. And the reason I have to take this concrete out is because the concrete floor that will be going in here is the finished surface. And where that doorway is, we need a nice clean finished surface to go all the way through that doorway so that when you open your door, you don't look down and see the top of this wall. I've got the Milwaukee MX Fuel. This is, this is cordless. I mean, it's pretty crazy. This is just a battery. This is a regular standard size concrete saw. We'll see how this saw does cutting an eight inch wall out. I mean, definitely concrete dust, not something you want to breathe in. I'm glad I got my hearing protection in too. <clears throat> this thing definitely has the power. I just wish I had my water tank it would surely make a mess, but at least it wouldn't be so dusty. I'm glad I'm not breathing. The wind is just taking it. There we go. So that was about seven inches of concrete. The saw didn't have really any problem getting that out of there. That'll all get poured through with the floor when the floor gets done and it'll go right underneath where the door threshold is so that there's a nice finish um, right as you walk inside this main door. So now we can go ahead and frame in this door and keep on with the sheathing. All right, so nothing new here, guys. The door frame was the same as any other door frame. Even though this is a bigger door, it requires no different header because we're not supporting any weight on it. Uh, actually, this is gonna end up getting a porch over it. So there will be some header material and some rafters and stuff attached to that wall, but nothing that's gonna be bearing down directly on this doorway. I was going to do this wall early and get it out of the way and here we are, last wall to do, uh, and it's this one with the double angle cut, but realized it's actually not gonna be too bad because when we cut a 412 pitch off of the bottom or the top, that piece will be able to be used on the other side, I do believe, is it the other side, Greg? Let's think about this. No, literally it will go, so if I cut this bottom angle off, that piece will be able to go up here, so, it's going to be very efficient. We've had very little waste of the weather logic on this building. Um, and I think we're going to get away without a whole lot of waste by the time we're all done. But what I have to do, as you can see, another thing I should have done earlier is right along the roof line here on the garage roof, we need to do some extra blocking and framing so that I've got something to nail that bottom of the sheet into. Um, all I'm going to do is grab measurements from point to point and then i'm going to go down and i'll make all those cuts on the ground where it's a lot safer and a lot easier to do so and then i'll be right back up that's just going to run up the length of the roof line give us a nice place to nail on all of our sheets will stop with a nice break on a girt so they'll just be little triangles that we have to fill in top and bottom. I'll do the other side and then we're, we'll be ready for sheathing. So when doing your sheathing, siding, really anything on a, on a roof pitch, the, the simple way to do it is to know your roof pitch. So we built this, we know it's a 412 pitch, so I don't have to do any math or, or take a level and figure out what it is, but that's something you're gonna wanna do. And then when you make that determination, specifically for this, I'm just going to come up to my peak here I've got a mark designated right here on the center of my girt. And all I'm going to do is pull this dimension. Now this is 87 and a half. So what I'm gonna do is use 87 and a half as my long point measurement. An eight foot sheet is not gonna make it all the way down here because obviously that's, it's longer than 
uh, eight foot. So I'm gonna stop the sheet on this girt here and the cutoff that is up there when I cut the angle will be end up getting cut down here. So it's, it's nice, I don't have to waste anything. This is obviously a very easy situation. We've got a 412 on top of a 412. So that 412 cut will work for this 412 cut. It is very important though when, when installing anything off of an angle that you're trying to use the angle to determine your dimensions. You have to install your sheets plumb, level, whatever. Nice thing is Weather Logic, man, is very, very nice to work on. It's solid and I would say pretty slip resistant, wouldn't you? I would say so. I mean, I just put on that wet spot and then it didn't slip. We're gonna go ahead, Greg, and get a nail up top. Good enough? If you like it. Yeah, I hit one somewhere. So now that we have one defined, we're gonna work our way out of the peak. You could have started down on an end. I think it's easier to work from the peak out. You know what I was thinking about? What? I was thinking about the fact that like, specifically a wall like this, right? This gable wall. If we were using regular, regular OSB and then had the house wrap on it, like what a, what a, like a cluster and a mess and nasty oh, and like, you know, yeah, you could run it this way, but yeah, how, I hate, Here, I got it, I got it. yeah, you're on a, the right side of it. I hate house wrapping gables. Hey, be careful, man. But not yet. Okay, so that's all the sheets on this side. It's actually really easy. Um, more importantly, we had literally four inches of scrap out of each sheet. And one sheet did, like this is the cutoff from this piece. And we had a four inch scrap. So that's an awesome thing. I love to see minimal waste. I'm gonna go through and nail everything off. And then this will be ready to tape. But I'm gonna go get that other side done first. All right, so we've got the wall taped, we've got our roof taped, but we've got this joint right here that we need to do something with, and we're gonna also tape that. You'll notice we kind of ran all of this over top onto the roof, ensuring that we've got a good seal. But now what we're gonna do is take our tape, and this is a very complicated, um, well, I don't wanna say complicated because it's not, you're just gonna stick the tape in there, but it's difficult to do a good job. And because of it, I'll show you what we do to ensure that we get a nice, um, a nice seal. I am gonna use Greg's help for this. Greg, I'm gonna pass this back here behind me. Okay, Greg's gonna take the roll, and then I'm gonna take the tape and I'm gonna fold it in half, and I'm gonna start it up here, and I'm gonna take my squeegee, stick it right in the middle. Okay, and then I'm going to go, you know, roughly every four foot, fold it in half, take my squeegee, stick it right in the middle and go push it right to right to the, uh, the seam. I'm not gonna worry about any of this. We're gonna lay this all out. You gotta also keep your tape nice and taut, which means tight, Greg. I don't know if you heard that you word. Say tight. Um, you can, you can. Now I will say if anybody's got a better way of doing this, I'd, I'd gladly listen, uh, but I'm not done yet. And we're gonna show you what we do to ensure that this is, you know, a nice clean joint of tape when it's all done. So just to speed this up, what we've got going on is a couple spots where the tape, you know, might have a couple wrinkles in it. And that is where water can make its way in behind the tape, especially because we're here on a wall. We don't want water running there. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and make sure we squeegee this first roll of tape down, and then I'll show you what our next step is. Issues like this right here, or this right here, we get a little bit of bubble, we get a little bit of what they call fish mouth. Sorry, the, well, I'm not sorry, but the noise you hear in the background is it is harvest season. 
and they're picking corn. But what we're gonna do is we're now gonna run a fresh clean um, run on the top side. And what, what we're doing that for is when you're running an angled or you're running tape into an inside corner like this, it can be very difficult to get it to lay perfectly flat. And these areas are gonna be your problem areas where water's gonna work its way in. So by running another run of the tape, what we're trying to do is get a nice flat run that we know is gonna have a good um, adhesion right here. No fish mouth, and it covers up any potential for water coming in that first piece of tape that we ran that might have a couple, uh, you know, problem areas. Greg, you wanna run this behind me? And obviously the important thing is to really apply a little bit of pressure and squeegee it, not just long ways, okay? But you wanna squeegee it out to the edge. And what you're doing is bringing that adhesion out to the edge of the tape and making sure that it is um, gonna be a good tight seal for you. Now let's assume Let's assume that you were doing house wrap on this wall. How would you detail this during construction so that water wasn't going into this joint? You would have to do some flashings, run your house wrap long. Uh, it's not really a good solution. By taping these joints, which you're gonna do anyway, this is like completely flashed. Any water that hits this wall is gonna hit this roof and go um, out over the roof instead of down into the frame. So that's pretty cool, I do like that. We are gonna be using a standing seam metal roof. And so when we put our flashings up this wall, we'll tape those again to the weather logic, um, ensuring that any moisture that gets behind the walls, or I should say the facade, not the wall, because nothing's getting behind this, um, is gonna work right over top of the flashings down onto the roof. Pretty cool. Here we go. I think that this is a this is a great way to do it. A couple extra steps doing the side pieces, but I think it's uh, it's good for the long term, you know, life of the building, uh, life of the project. Remember, we are not getting our um, well. Actually, this wall will be able to get sided, so that's good. There's no windows on it, but we're not getting our windows for another three months. So everything we we do, we're thinking about long term exposure with the weather logic in case it doesn't get covered up in any short amount of time. Uh, we all know house wrap doesn't work well over the long run, especially in windy conditions. Um, water gets behind house wrap, it blows around, it's annoying on the job site. This is gonna stay sealed just like this now until we put our siding on it. You know, there really is no better way of cutting out openings than using the router. It just goes right along your material gives you a perfectly clean finish and you don't have to measure, mark, and then cut with a circ saw. You just, just run it right along the perimeter. Lots of questions about whether we were going to um, seal tape our corners. And of course, that's a, that's a fair question because we didn't do it yet, but why go through all this if you're not gonna seal tape your corners? So there you go, there's a corner wrap. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna come behind it and run another roll here and another roll here. Just because we don't have, because of the corner, we don't get a full two inches each way from the joint. So I just want to ensure that we've got a good seal and it's cheap insurance. <laughs> 